Hi there, I am Jess Pyatt, blogger behind JessUndress.com, here with iGirl Tech News interviewing Maida Kadikesh. How are you today, Maida? I'm doing really well. How about yourself? I'm great, thank you. So, you are a lead developer for MyFitnessPal? Yeah, I work as an Android developer at MyFitnessPal. Awesome. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about what you do there? Sure, yeah, so uh, we have an Android app here, and uh, I pretty much work on all the exciting features that you see on the app, and um, we're a team of about five right now, and um, yeah, I was actually the first female developer to join the team, so it was really exciting. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. So what do you like most about working there? Um, the bunch of people here are really great, so they're all, I mean, I guess a lot of people say this about a lot of companies, but... Everyone's really, really nice here, and um, they're also really helpful, really welcoming. And you kind of join, and the very first day you have so many friends, which is great. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, what makes you passionate about being a software developer? Um, I guess the you get the sort of satisfaction after solving a really hard problem. So, I mean, you might be stuck on something for days, but when you finally solve it. There's like this adrenaline or this high you get, which which is really cool. It's kind of like, yeah, I must fix this and you finally get there. That feels really good. Can you tell us when you knew you were interested in tech and your journey from then to now? Um, yeah, sure. So um, I guess my parents were like always saying that you know I should think about getting into computer science, mm -hmm. and uh, I hadn't actually made up my mind at that point. And I guess this was back in high school. And um, I actually somehow wanted to be a physicist at some point. But um, yeah. And um, but at the very end, I kind of felt that this would kind of give me the opportunity to sort of pursue whatever I wanted in the future. Because it's like a really good foundation to do computer science. So I mean, suppose I want to go into art in the future or become a physicist in the future. It's really good having this as like foundational studies. So I took computer science in my undergrad, and then um, I I ended up liking it and sticking with it. And you know, like I, I thank my parents for you know <laughs> encouraging me to get into computer science. Love but it. yeah. Okay. So what are some of the personality traits you need to be a great software developer like yourself? Um, I guess you need to be curious. So curious about how to build something or um, how you could build something better, and um, maybe creative. I guess a lot of people would say things like you need to be logical and good at math, but I don't really think so. I think it's more like curiosity, creativity, and um, I don't know, excited about solving problems, I guess. What are some of the issues that you've run into being a female in tech? Sure. Um, so I guess in um, school, so in undergrad, there was just about two or three female developers, and there were about 30, I mean, 30 male developers. So the ratio has always been skewed in pretty much, you know, like undergrad, grad school, and even like the workplaces I've been in. I've, I mean, I wouldn't say there's much discrimination or anything like that. I haven't faced such things. But I guess you find yourself kind of uh, absorbing their ways rather than them being more open to your ways. For example, I wasn't really into video games or um, like geeky stuff when I get, got into computer science, but then because I was surrounded by like 30 guys, I ended up getting into video games and you know like what, more geeky stuff. So you kind of adapt to that and you turn into somebody like a different kind of person. That's one thing I found. So what would you tell a woman that didn't go to college for engineering and is interested in learning how to code? Yeah, um, it's completely possible. There are some really good um, courses online. Um, so I myself, um, I did a master's in software management at Carnegie Mellon, but just after I did that, I did like a six-week Android boot camp um, run by these guys called CodePath. And so in just six weeks, I learned how to build Android apps. And because of that, I got a job at MyFitnessPal. So, I mean, looking back, you don't even need the previous two degrees. I mean, of course, the, you know, the undergrad and grad school helped in getting a job. But I'm saying that 
if you have like the motivation, passion, and inclination for it, even a six-week boot camp of um, just building stuff, like building things every week and getting your hands dirty and everything can help you get into computer science. What do you think needs to change in the tech industry to get more females interested? I guess um, more awareness in terms of making tech seem less intimidating. Maybe starting in, maybe like helping out high school students I mean, helping students at the high school level. For example, if um, workplaces had something like shadow an engineer for a day, so you could bring in like um, high school students to come in and sit with the developer and see what they do, for them to actually understand um, that it's actually fun. And we work with like lots of pretty user interfaces, and it's actually like a lot of creativity, and not you know like all math. So I guess it's more like a mindset change that needs to happen. How do you see technology changing our lives in the next five to ten years? Um, I guess it's going to start becoming more and more immersive and ubiquitous with everyday life. So you're not actually going to notice that it's there. Right now, I mean, you see it as a watch or as a phone or as a device, but I think in the future it's more going to be just like present. For example, I mean, if you're driving, there'll be something like appearing on your dashboard that shows you directions. And yeah, so you're, you're going to be more closely tied in with technology. On LinkedIn, you list Carnotic singing as an interest. It made me curious. What is it? Sure. Um, so Carnotic music is um, South Indian classical music. And so, um, so basically in India, there's Hindustani, which uh, usually the north of India I mean, sings. And then there's Carnatic, which the south of India sings. And so um, I've been learning Carnatic music since I could talk <laughs> because my aunt, my aunt's like really into it. And she actually composes Carnatic music. So she got me into it at a very early age. OK. Mm -hmm. um, would you dare to give us an example? Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, okay, sure. Cool. This is a really, really simple song. It's the first song that children learn, but it goes like Shakti Sahita Ganapatim Shankara Di Sevitam Virakta Sakalam Nivara Surara Javinuta Kurukukam Bhakta Di Poshakam Havasutam Vinayakam Bhakti Mati Pradam Bhushitam Bhakti Mati Pradam Bhavayam Shakti Sahita Ganapatim yeah, that's one of the first songs children learn. It gets a bit more complicated later. <laughs> Thank you so much for singing. <laughs> I wonder if people at work heard me, but it's okay. They're probably busy grooming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay, so since you are so fantastic, how can we learn more and follow you? Oh, <laughs> well, that's nice. Um, I have a Twitter handle. It's at my surname, G-H-A-T-I-K-E-S-H. Thank you so much for taking the time for the interview today. Sure, yeah. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Absolutely fabulous. Well, signing off, this is Jess Pyatt with iGirl Tech News. Thank you so much again, Mega.